So this parable of the vineyard, the, the image of the vineyard is always about God's people, about Israel and about the church. And we hear all of this about how God has worked through history to build up his people, his vineyard, so that it bears fruit. So as I was reading through this, the first question is, well, is the vineyard of God bearing the fruit that the Lord wants? And uh, so reading this, preparing for the homily, is working up in me all of these frustrations, you know, all of the ways that we're not bearing this fruit. So, you know, you just think of these people, the people that don't get it, or the people who don't believe, or the people who don't give, they don't pray, they don't commit, they don't attend, they don't get it. So, reading this gospel, I was, I was really going to let you have it, you know. <laughs> I thought, I will use, this is great, Lord, I will use them, this to get them moving. And the basic idea was going to be, of course, we've got to co cooperate with grace because the Lord wants us to bear fruit. Um, so then, you know, I took a look, another look at the gospel, prayed with it a little bit, and, and it changed. This is the, the third or fourth parable in the last few weeks like this, and it's addressed specifically to the elders and the chief priests. And they are a, like a special kind of, of sinner, because their specific problem isn't that they, they, they do wrong and they know it. Instead, their, their problem is their inability to see themselves as sinners, their inability to see themselves as in need of divine grace in the first place. So Jesus has patiently and really perseveringly spoken to this group over and over and over. It's been the focus of the, the gospel for the last few weeks, and basically the, the method is tells a story. He says, do you see how foolish this person is? And they say, yeah, what a fool. And he says, that's you. And he's done this over and over. A few weeks ago, we talked about forgiveness. And there was the servant who owed a huge amount who was forgiven by uh, the, the landowner. And then he choked the servant who owed him a much smaller amount. And Jesus says, do you see how foolish that is? They say, yeah, what a, what a piece of work. And he says, that's, that's you. And then uh, the next week, we talked about the laborers, the one that was called at the, the, the first hour. And then those that were called in the last hour and how they got paid the same. And the first, the ones who were there since the beginning, they grumbled and they were envious. And he said, do you see how ridiculous they are? And the elders and the chief priests, yeah, I can't believe those guys. And he says, that's you. And then last week we heard the story about the two sons called to work in the, in the vineyard of their father. And the first one says no, but ends up in the vineyard. And the second one says yes and doesn't go. So he said, which of these did the father's will? They say the first one. And he says, and you are the second one. So today, Jesus continues to do this thing <clears throat> with, the, with, the, with the tenants of this vineyard, with this, with this specific group that can't see their need for God, who have a hard time seeing themselves as sinners. So here's how it went as I was reading through this. I'm reading the gospel, and I see Jesus say to the Pharisees, do you see these tenants? They're just shocking in their behavior. How foolish can you be to believe if you kill the son of the landowner that you're going to get his inheritance? And what do the chief priests respond? He say, they say, those tenants, they are blind. They don't get it. And Jesus says, that's you. So then I'm sitting here reading the gospel, and I say, Jesus got them. They are blind. They don't get it. And then I realized what I just said. And I thought it at first because I was like, come on, no. I, like, I wanted to, I, like I said, I, I had an idea for this homily. I want to get us moving when it comes to fruit. Or then I said, there's no way. I'm trying. I pray. I work. I fast. I study. I work to avoid sin. I do good. I go to confession, and then I realized, again, what I was saying. You know the story about the, the Pharisee and the tax collector who go to the temple? And the Pharisee says, God, thank you that I am not like those other people. Thank you that I fast and pray and observe the law. But he's the one, unlike the tax collector, tax collector he's the one who, who goes away unjustified. So then I realized, <laughs> I said to the Lord, go ahead and say it. And he didn't, because he's kind. But I realized I was exactly, was ex exactly where Jesus wanted me. He got me exactly where he wanted me. 
He didn't give me tools to open the eyes of the blind this Sunday. Instead, he expo- exposed my blindness. And when it happened, it's nice to talk about conversion, but it's a different thing to go through it. I just felt helpless and embarrassed because I couldn't say, I'm sorry for this and that and I will change. But all I could realize was that I, I don't see what I should be sorry for. So this is the very def- definition of blindness, to not see what I don't see. So I see, this was like the fruit, I, I see that the problem is that I don't see the problem, Lord. And he did, after that, reveal some things. Things that I was blind to before, that I'm still pretty blind to, but mostly it was like sinful self-interest that's covered by a good exterior, or the ways that I remain the center of my life. But strangely enough, the gift was to know that I don't know. And that is to know my great need. Certainly there's more to come. The Lord will do, do good things with this. But what I want to share with you is that, that, that the Lord worked hard for the last few weeks and finally, in me, overcame a little of my blindness. And the fruit, yes, there's helplessness and embarrassment, but also there's great gratitude because even when it's scary, it's, it's a wonderful thing to fall into the hands of God and ha- to be right to, to, for him to get you right where he wants you. So that experience is gratitude and a strange peace, not the kind of peace that comes from knowing that I'm doing the right thing, but instead this kind of peace that says, I, I know that I, I don't know what I'm doing wrong. It's, it's the, only, the kind of peace that comes from knowing more deeply and profoundly my own need before the Lord, who, who is for the needy. So the only insight I have for you from the gospel for this weekend is that this parable is about me. It might be about you. I don't know. But I know for sure it's addressed to me. And until I understand that all of this, trying to point out the foolishness of the tenants, until I understand that it's about me and not them, I will not bear fruit.